Hello and welcome back to Exotic Car Hacks. Today we are not looking at this SVJ because we did that last time, but today what we are doing is look at my new Lamborghini Urs. Now, if you've watched any of my past interactions with the Urs, it was pretty fucking brutal because I did say a couple of things that we're gonna talk about today. So let's go outside and check out my new Lamborghini Urs. But don't forget, as I said last time, I didn't do it for the fame or the money. I did it for the blowjobs. What we're seeing here is my new Lamborghini Urs. Now, this is a very special car, even though the Mexicans in the background don't want us to hear how special it is because obviously they're, I don't know what the fuck they're doing back there. But anyways, this is a very special car because it is a very different option to Urs than some of my previous versions of the same car. So this is my fourth Lamborghini SUV in the last year. And you may be wondering, well, why the fuck do you keep buying the same car if you hate it so much? And the answer is quite simple. You see, I still think to this day that this is one of the ugliest SUVs ever made. I know, it's pretty brutal, right? I, I just know it's just tearing you apart to hear me say that about your dream car. But there are flaws to this car that I just can't get over, and we're gonna talk about them today. But this particular one is just a little bit better than my last ones, and I'm gonna explain to you why I bought this specific car. Now, first off, something you should know about the Urs, it is a section 179 car because it does weigh over 6,000 pounds. So you can actually depreciate it for those of you cheaters out there. And I'm not talking about the cheating, you know what kind of cheating, we're talking about the cheating your taxes. You can actually get away with it because it's got 6,000 pounds and above. So if you ever thought of buying one, you can do that. The second thing we should be pointing out here is that my other ones were a lot uglier than this one. And while I still think the yellow is probably my favorite color to date on the earth, this matte white will have to do just fine. So it isn't as pretty because I think the Urs is just an understated car. I've said that numerous times about the Huracan compared to the R8 when they first came out, and I'm gonna say it again. The Huracan pre-Evo looked like complete horse shit. And it was basically a plastic piece of shit that was less even quality based than an R8 that cost 50,000 less. Here is the exact same fucking dilemma again with the same thing versus the RS Q8, which is literally the same car for $100,000 less. So how do you justify a better looking interior in the same car without a Lamborghini badge for 100K less? And this is where the argument comes in. A fully loaded with carbon option Urus is like almost 300K. A fully loaded RS Q8 is like 150K. So like, how? Where does the 150K go? It's the same car, the same everything, but somehow if you put a tune and an exhaust in RSQ8, you go just fast. So what makes this special outside of the badge? And the answer is nothing. That's why I hate it. You see, I hate it when manufacturers fuck us. And in this case, they gave us the best selling SUV in the world and they fucked us like they did with the Huracan. And that's my problem with this particular Lamborghini and always was. Now, what I will tell you and why I keep buying them, this is the fourth time I've owned one and every time I make 20 to 30 grand owning these cars, because someone else comes by and goes, I want an Urus. And I'm like, here, take mine. And I make 20 to 30 grand. So eventually you get somewhere where you go, what is happening, right? Like, like, our, like why do you keep buying the same car? Because remember, my opinion of what I like of a car or not has nothing to do with its financial hackability. And what I teach people in my training is how to hack cars, which means if you click the link in the description, you can actually learn that for free. The point here, is that from a dollar standpoint, you just can't beat this fucking car. So it keeps coming back in my life. But this one is a little bit different than my last ones. First off, on the outside, it's matte white. And as you can see, it has a very Stormtrooper look. It comes with the 23 inch wheels and all the body panels are gloss while the actual car is matte. That looks really fucking awesome. Secondly, it does have something that makes it a lot more special than other cars. Now you might be saying, well, PJ, why did you get cheap and get black colored calipers? Why don't you just turn them a different color? And the reality is, after I show you why this truck is so special, even though you would tell me these should probably be blue, I would tell you it isn't going to be because it makes more sense this way. Something to learn about design is that sometimes less is more and you don't need attention to all aspects of the car. Now, let's take a look at what makes this a very expensive and special Urus because that's why I actually fell in love with it. Look at this. Tell me this isn't fucking glorious. Like there's two reasons why this interior is absolutely fucking awesome. 
The first one is it's almond blue interior, which is so fucking sick. The second reason is because you can't see cum stains on blue, which is something, why are you laughing? You're always like dying laughing in the middle of my videos. But anyways, you can't see cum stains on the blue, which makes it pretty fucking cool if you're the type of individuals that enjoys a very active lifestyle. And why the fuck is it raining? Well, it's raining, so let's get into our Lamborghini Urus and actually enjoy it. But before, I'm gonna show you this, look at this. It has the rear TVs in the rear because we're not gonna come back to the fucking rear. I'm gonna tell you why that's worth the full 15, 20 thousand dollars. So you get in the car and we're gonna talk inside. All right, so here we are inside this particularly unique and epic Lamborghini Urus. And first off, I'd like to say as a climate warrior fighter who needed an SUV to basically drive the most beautiful roads of South Florida, like a giant pussy, like why else do we buy SUVs when we really don't need them? Because most of the ends right now have space. We buy them because we're afraid of other people on the road. And so we don't really use them for what they're worth. So I decided that this particular car was not going to have 14 different modes here, but rather just the ones you need, the Strata Sport Corsa and of course the wet mode. And you really don't need the other fucking modes. It's like, why the fuck do you need like a rock climbing mode? Who is going to go rock climb a fucking Urus out there? And here's why that just doesn't make any sense. While you can take the car off-road and it's capable of going off-road, the whole car would get fucked up and then it'll cost you like 20, 30 grand to fix it. And nobody in their right mind would do that to an Urus, so therefore it's fucking pointless. So we've come to that agreement. Secondly, there's a lot of cool shit in this particular one that I've learned to kind of enjoy uh, in this particular car that in my previous ones wasn't as obvious. So first off, this has the ambient light option. I've said several times that the ambient light option is fantastic and a must have. Some of you ignore what I say, which is perfectly okay. I wouldn't listen to me either. But in this case, buy the fucking ambient light option. It's the best fucking thing you can do. It looks really cool at fucking nights. So that's a must. The other thing that's really becoming really good with this particular car that I actually enjoy a lot is the fact that it has soft closed doors. And I didn't realize how much I missed soft closed doors until I had this one that the other ones didn't have soft closed door, this one did. I thought it was special. It also has the 23 inch wheels, which we saw outside earlier, and it gives the car a very distinctive look, much, much better, much better than I think the 22 inch wheels. But there is a flaw with 23 inch wheels. The tires are always out of stock. So you basically have to go to the dealer and pre-order tires so you can make sure you never run out or don't have a bad tire and you're completely shit out of luck. I would also argue that this car, which I'm gonna show you later, also was equipped with an aftermarket front lip, which really has changed my view of the design of the front of the car significantly, which we're gonna look at in a second. But back to the reason why I think it's really cool to have fucking TVs in the back. So there's a couple of usages for the TV that are really good. The first one, the first one, is that you get really good Wi-Fi in the car, so it's really easy to actually browse the internet on something. And even better, and I'm gonna show you this while you guys stay there, stay there. As I'm back here, you can probably see me here. You see, there's a lot of room to fuck here, which is really, really awesome. So what better way to actually have a great conversation with someone to get ahead here while you can actually watch porn on these? And even if you can't, look, this is the thing that like doesn't make any sense, right? It seems to be completely dang, but look, boom, you can actually fucking take them off and actually like literally be like, like a tablet and like play on them. It's fucking genius. Like it's something as small as this, which I have to figure out how to put them back, whatever. But it's something as small as this that basically tells me how, fuck it, does it even work? How the fuck does this even work? Oh, it's on top here. Okay, so it's something as simple as this that tells me that they really thought this shit out, unlike a lot of other manufacturers who give you TVs in the back who absolutely don't do shit. Like try sitting in the back of a Mercedes and you'll basically be sitting here and you'll be like, okay, I'm in the back of a Mercedes and I'm looking at the fucking navigation for the car there. Like you're not in a fucking airplane. Why do you need to know where the fucking car is going when you have a pass, like you have a driver in front of you in the back of a fucking like E-class Mercedes or S-class, it doesn't make any sense, it's stupid. And why else would you wanna control the radio from here when everyone else can hear the shit? It's not like you can play music in this fucking speaker. So it's completely fucking useless. So the first time in the world, the fucking TVs make a difference and they fucking work and they can be used for something other than jacking off, which can 
be ultimately something great because you can actually check things out, get on the internet, do things, and it's very, very useful. The rear climate, awesome. The only thing this car is missing is the cockpit seating, which really would be amazing because it would basically create a hub here where you had your little uh, whatever for cup holders that doesn't come down. And while most people don't like it because they go, well, I need a bench to carry people, I like it because while it makes blowjobs much, much harder to get in the back seat, it does deter from your ability to fuck in the car. It does not deter from the experience of the car where four people can really enjoy a Lamborghini experience in a car. And I think that's the part that I think a lot of people miss with these cars. There is no point of having a fucking Lamborghini SUV if you're gonna drive it the same way that you drive basically a Jeep SRT10 and just use it for power or speed. It just doesn't work that way. So I'm coming back up front to finish this conversation. Other cool features on this particular car are, right here, you will find a charger, something that I didn't have in my other one, which I thought was really, really neat and really cool to use. Again, other than that, there isn't much of a difference between this and every other Urs I've owned, other than you get the panel roof, you get the bigger wheels, you get all that, which all of which looks really, really cool. Now, I've reviewed the Urs 100 times, driving it around, etc. So it doesn't really matter. It drives really fast and it drives really, really good amazingly good it just can't justify a three hundred thousand dollar price point for the same shit audi creates for one hundred fifty thousand. so that's the argument with the urs so before you blast me and you go well you said you hate it and you bought another one i do it for the money and you do it for the money so you can keep getting the blowjobs that's how this works uh and that's why this is like i said a great color combo a great opportunity but once again as long as you want an urs it's fantastic if you don't want an urs then it just can't justify a $300,000 price point. And I think that's really what it comes down to. But I just wanted to show you this card. There are a few upgrades we're doing to this. All of this shit is basically turning out to be forged carbon soon. Uh, we're going to turn all this wood into forged carbon stuff too, thanks to uh, Peter at uh, over at 1016 Industries, who's going to hook us up with that to make the car much, much better. If you are looking for carbon parts for your car inside out, highly recommend you reach out to 1016 Industries because I think they're just much better than other manufacturers when it comes to interior and exterior carbon. Their work's gotten excellent and their fitment is excellent as well. And let's go out and let me show you the part I was telling you earlier about uh, the part I was telling you earlier about the front. But one other cool feature I just remembered that a lot of people aren't talking about in reviews either. You know when you have a, a phone that's connected to like uh, the, the car, right? And you have another person that has a phone in the car, right? Usually it chooses which person's phone is basically connected. So like, I can have a phone and the other person can have a phone, but usually they can't be at the same time. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this, I've been able to connect three phones simultaneously that will basically be able to override one another for music or for uh, calls. And the only thing that lets you do that is actually prioritizing which one does or which one doesn't go first. So it's like if you're in the car, you count. If the other person has to manually go and be like, I'm taking over, which is really cool. But if you don't prioritize it, everybody can basically fight over the music. This is really, really cool because that means you don't have to disconnect the phone to connect another phone. I know it sounds fucking lazy, but it's the small shit that makes a really big difference, which is where you see the Audi kind of collaboration really come in where this is the type of shoe you see in an Audi, not a Lamborghini. Coming from an SVG of the $700 fucking thousand dollars and doesn't even have the ability to Bluetooth uh, a phone for music to a car that basically lets you connect multiple phones, gets your dick hard a lot more than you would expect. And this also has a charging station, which is something that many manufacturers should start fucking learning from because it is very commonly understood now that we fucking hate buying chargers for cars and when you own more than one car it's fucking annoying to have to take your cord with you everywhere so it just doesn't make sense so the car epic the options epic the color epic the design justifying an extra 150 grand over in a qrs8 probably not now let's go outside and see this final part of this car all right guys so look on the outside here come over here i want you to look at the front of this car real quick and you'll see You'll see all of this basically carbon fiber kit that covers the bottom and adds that additional lip. It does make the car a little bit lower, you know, so a little bit more dangerous for driving. But look at the design. It really completes the front by making the front a lot more fuck you. And on the side, holy shit, it's raining hard. Well, that's not good. All right, so we survived this. Whew. 
Okay, I got wet. Can you imagine that? Like, I'm like a cat. If I get wet, the shit ends up, you know, fucked. I mean, I'm hairy, so when I get wet, it's like, you know, I got to lick myself for an hour. But look, I mean, this isn't fucking helping, but look over there. What I was saying when this shit got interrupted by this fucking storm is that, you see, like, I don't understand this shit. It's like perfectly fucking beautiful, and it's raining just here enough to make my fucking car dirty. But the point is, look at the fucking front end of the car, and you'll get an idea for the fact that this looks a lot better than fucking stock. So end of story, if you're gonna buy a fucking Urus, put a Vorsteiner front lip, put 1016 carbon parts on it, complete it, buy it for 250K and you'll be safe for the next six to 12 months. But don't do that, spend 300K and you're risking it. So what I will tell people is that if you are buying a Lamborghini Urus from a dollar standpoint, it may make really good sense. If you're buying one because you like the design, then good for you, but I just can't justify 300K versus 150K other than the demand. Now. The demand allows me to drive these cars and make money. However, once that demand falls and the supply catches up, that may not always be the case. And that is something that we're gonna have to wait and really find out how long. But with the depreciation, it may still make sense. Up to you to decide. So tell me, what is your favorite SUV? Would you take my G63 over my Urs or my Urs over my G63? Let me know if there's another SUV you think is really, really hot that you think you'd want me to look at and put the comments below. Subscribe, hate the channel, like it, do whatever you do. Uh, and of course, please, 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 please subscribe. See you next time.